Sometimes, people travel large distances just to get a close look at something very small. All these people have come to eastern Arizona to visit the Sipe White Mountain Wildlife Area for a special occasion. This is the High Country Hummers Festival. <gasps> and there's a lot to see here. Center features displays and hands-on exploration of history, wildlife conservation, habitat, and Native American culture. And it's where they host talks about wildlife photography and hummingbird natural history. We have people here today from the Monarch Study. We have the U.S. Forest Service, the uh, White Mountain Audubon Center, and then from Game and Fish, the critters from the Adobe Wildlife Center. Oh, wildlife views. We were we had magazines and we were selling some of our books. And we also had a critter booth where, or a photo booth where you could stand next to a blue heron. We took your picture and then printed it out for you to take home. And we also had a booth about different plants you can uh, plant in your garden for hummingbirds. But these are the real stars of the show. These hummingbirds migrate through the area during the summer monsoon season. We have a large number of hummingbirds. We go through between 500 and 700 pounds of sugar every year and food just for the hummingbirds. And we have bird feeders all around um, the visitor center that people can come out all, all summer and take a look at. With all these hummingbirds coming together in one place, it's a good opportunity for researchers to gather information on the health of these birds. Sherry Williamson, director of the Southeastern Arizona Bird Observatory, also returns every year. We are here every July to ban hummingbirds for just one morning here at Sipe White Mountain Wildlife Area. It's in part a public education event. We were originally invited by the Arizona Game and Fish Department to do a banding demonstration here. And we were finding some very interesting information in the birds that we caught during that demonstration. So in partnership with Arizona Game and Fish, we have continued this once a year banding here that tells us a little bit about the state of the hummingbird here in uh, the White Mountains. When we capture a hummingbird in one of our traps, we bring it over to the table and extract it from the little carrying bag that it comes in. And the first thing we have to do is to identify it by species and age and sex. We want to know what species it is because that's going to uh, influence what size band goes on the bird. Some of our hummingbirds are larger, some are smaller. Most of our hummingbirds take one standard band size, but we have a few, the little calliope hummingbirds, that have to take the smallest size band that we make. And so we have to determine what hummingbird we've got before we even know what band might fit it. When we get the band on the bird and uh, we get the basic information about it, its species and age and sex, we examine the feathers uh, we examine the feather condition, we examine the bill for signs of recent growth uh, so that we know what age the bird is. We look for signs of its physical condition for the local broad-tailed hummingbird females. We give them a little obstetric exam. We look down in their little pelvic region to see if they have a developing egg. Uh, in the migrants like the rufous and the calliope that don't nest here in the White Mountains, we look for fat to determine how well prepared they are to migrate. We look for signs of molt, which is the annual replacement of the feathers. That's a very demanding process and, and whether the birds are molting and how much molt they're doing tells us a lot about the resources. If the birds have lots of resources, they're more likely to be in molt than if they don't have those resources. We also look for pollen, which is the powdery substance that the flowers deposit on the birds that the birds carry from flower to flower in order that the flowers can make seeds. If we're seeing lots of pollen, that means there's lots and lots of flowers out there. And frequently when we're seeing lots of birds with lots of pollen, we're not seeing very many hummingbirds at the feeders because they prefer to be at the flowers. So what the pollen is, what color it is, and where it is on the bird tells us a little bit about what kinds of flowers are available to them and what flowers they're using. And that too tells us how healthy envir the environment that they're living in is and how well they're using those resources. And once we get all of that information, the last thing we do, because they sometimes slip away when we wrap them up in the little net to weigh them, is we get their weight 
and by comparing that to their wing length and how much fat we saw when we blew the feathers aside to look for the fat, we can get an idea of whether they're a big boned bird or a small boned bird, and there is quite a lot of variation. The very last thing that we do is we give them an opportunity to have a little honorarium before they leave. We offer them a drink at a feeder. We don't really want them to come back to the trap during the remainder of the banding period because there's nothing else we can really learn from them by coming back a second time in two or three hour period. So we give them a drink in hopes that they'll just go away somewhere and then come back next year. And we, bid, we put them in a waiting hand. Uh, we uh, get a human volunteer to recruit as a launch pad and send them on their way. Woo, there you go. It's remarkable to be able to see so many of these beautiful creatures up close. <laughs> if you want to be part of this unique wildlife watching experience, make sure to join us at the site White Mountain Wildlife Area on the last Saturday in July. Visit the Arizona Game and Fish Department website for more information.